Okay, in this video we're going to prove a result uh, towards our final goal of proving that there is a primitive root modulo any prime. And this result reads as follows. So let's let p be a prime and d be a natural number that divides p minus 1. Then x to the d minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p has exactly n incongruent solutions modulo p. So let's get going with the proof. So if we recall from a previous result which we've proved on this channel, we know that x to the d minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p has at most d incongruent solutions. And so this is a fact uh, that's true for prime numbers but maybe is not true all of the time for um, composite numbers if you're working modulo a composite number. Good, so that's our first step is to notice that we have at most d incongruent solutions and now we want to do the following. So let's write um, p minus 1 equals d times e for some natural number e. So we know we can do that because we have an assumption that d divides p minus 1 and now we're going to factor the following. So we'll take x to the p minus 1 minus 1 and um, we'll factor it as follows. So we'll first write it as um, x to the d e minus 1. Good. Which we can write that thing as x to the d to the e power minus 1. And then we can uh, use a standard factoring form formula here. So this is equal to x to the d minus 1 times x to the d to the power e minus 1 plus x to the d to the power e minus 2 all the way down to x to the d to the first power plus 1. So we have something like that. Um, but now notice we can write that as x to the d minus 1 times x to the d times e minus 1 all the way down to x to the d plus 1 using our exponent rules to simplify that as needed. So this factoring of x to the p minus 1 minus 1 uh, will be important for our argument. So uh, we'll take this factoring and then we'll also notice the following and that is x to the p minus 1 minus 1 congruent to 0 mod p has exactly p minus 1 solutions. So we know it has at most p minus 1 solutions again by that previous theorem but we know it also has exactly p minus 1 solutions because we can put our hands on those solutions and those are the following 1 2 up to p minus 1 and this is by Fermat's little theorem okay great so we're about halfway done the, with the proof I'll clean up the board and then we'll finish it off Okay, so we left off having factored x to the p minus 1 in this following form. And you know, we also noticed that this has uh, exactly p minus 1 solutions. And I mean uh, when we set this congruent to 0 modulo p. And then uh, furthermore, we know that this has at most d times e minus 1 solutions. mod p, again when we set that congruent to 0 mod p. So putting this together, that tells us the following. That tells us that x to the d minus 1 congruent to 0 mod p has at least p minus 1, so it has all of these solutions minus at most that many, so that means we're going to subtract off from here d times e minus 1 solutions mod p. But now let's simplify that. So now we'll notice the following. So p minus 1 uh, minus d e minus 1 equals p minus 1 minus d e plus 1, uh, sorry, plus d. 
great. But then uh, our original assumption was that D divided P minus one and that D times E was P minus one, so those cancel. So that means X to the D minus X to the D minus one is congruent to zero mod P has at least D solutions. But then we started off by recalling a result that told us that it had at most D solutions. So putting that together shows us that it has exactly D incongruent solutions. And that finishes the proof.